Hi, in today's lesson we're going to be looking at vocabulary. Vocabulary related to holiday and travel. This is a very common topic in exams and I'm going to give you some specific topic related vocabulary that will impress your listener. So let's get started. Firstly, we're going to look at verbs related to travel and holidays. So in order to see the new vocabulary, I'm going to tell you a short story. So one day I fancied going on holiday. So I picked up some brochures from the travel agency. I browsed through the brochures. I chose a package holiday with a well-known tour operator. I then booked my holiday. A few weeks later, I went to the airport and checked in for my flight. I also checked in my suitcase and kept with me a small item of hand luggage. I could choose between a window or an aisle seat on the plane. I was given my boarding pass to get through security. Nowadays, you can download one onto your phone. I showed my passport to the immigration officials. I did some shopping in the duty free and I got some foreign currency at the Bureau de Change. And then I boarded the plane. I found my seat and fastened my safety belt. The flight took off at 10 o'clock. Three hours later, we landed. All the passengers disembarked. I left the airport and two hours later, I arrived at my hotel where I checked in. At the hotel, I had a choice of accommodation. If I'd wanted a bedroom and something to eat in the morning, it's called bed and breakfast. This is often just abbreviated to B and B. If I'd preferred to have breakfast and dinner, I could have stayed on a half board basis. If I'd wanted breakfast, lunch and dinner, I could have stayed on a full board basis. They also had rooms with cooking facilities if I'd wanted to prepare my own food and stay on a self catering basis. Alternatively, alternatively, if I'd wanted all my meals and drinks included, I could have stayed on an all-inclusive basis. Single rooms in the hotel had just one small bed. Twin rooms had two small beds. Double rooms had one large bed. And family rooms had one large bed and two small beds. Most of the rooms were en suite with their own private bath or shower. All rooms had a balcony or a terrace with a view of the sea. I spent the next two weeks sunbathing on the beach and sightseeing in the local area. It was with a great deal of reluctance that I eventually checked out of the hotel and returned home. So I hope my story has got you in the holiday spirit now let's look at some nouns specifically related to holidays. Let's look at the types of holiday you can go on. Firstly, a package holiday is where you might stay in a hotel, a resort, a villa or a chalet. This is a holiday organised by a travel company for which you pay a fixed price that includes the cost of the hotel and travel and sometimes food. Or you might go on a more simple camping holiday where you can stay in a tent or a caravan. Or a cruise where you sleep in the ship's cabin. Or a skiing holiday where you might stay in a hotel, a resort, a youth hostel, a guest house or a chalet. How about a safari where you might spend the night in a tent, a hotel or a resort? Or a walking holiday where you could also spend the night in a tent, hotel, youth hostel or guest house. Or a sailing holiday where you spend the night in a boat's cabin. Or a caravanning holiday in a caravan. Or finally a sightseeing holiday sleeping in a hotel, a youth hostel or guest house. Let's look in more detail at the vocabulary related to travel and holidays. So there are a few different words for a holiday 
an excursion, a voyage, a tour, a journey and a trip. So when do you use each word and do they mean the same? Well, not quite. Let's look in more detail. An excursion is a short journey, usually made for pleasure and often by a group of people. So you could say we're planning an excursion to the seaside at the weekend. A voyage is a long journey, especially by ship. So we could say the voyage from Southampton to New York by ship took about five days. A tour is a visit to a place or area, especially one during which you look around the place or the area and learn about it. So we could say the best way to see London is by taking a guided tour. A journey is the act of travelling from one place to another, especially in a vehicle. So you could say last year they went on a train journey across China. And lastly, a trip is a journey in which you go somewhere, usually for a short time and come back again. So we could say James is going on a business trip to Singapore. So he's going to go to Singapore and come back. Finally, let's look at some idioms and expressions that are used with travel and holidays. A globetrotter is someone who has traveled a lot. Last year, I went to Australia, Canada and Brazil. Also Argentina and China. I'm a bit of a globetrotter. To thumb a lift is to hitchhike. So if you're backpacking around Europe, you might hitchhike or thumb a lift. To travel light means to travel with the minimum amount of luggage. If you go to countries that are very different from your own, you might experience a culture shock. If you travel all day, you could be said to spend the day on the road. If you like to go to quieter, less touristy places, we can say we like to get off the beaten track. And finally, if we travel too much, we can say, I hate living my life out of a suitcase. So now you know lots of vocabulary specifically related to travel and holidays. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video if you found it useful. I'm a new channel and your likes really do help me. And subscribe by clicking the button down below to get more free English language videos out every Friday. See you next time.